the Republican Congress during its final weeks in office should fund a wall along our southern border with Mexico. That's not a new idea, obviously. Trump ran for office beginning three years ago on that very promise. Voters agreed with it. They elected him. Now he's demanding unequivocally that the wall finally get built. Now, at the same time, and this is not a coincidence, the American news media has identified the single most racist idea that anyone in the history of this country has ever come up with, and that is, of course, building a wall along our southern border with Mexico. Watch. The president went to the heart of what I call his brown menace theory. These migrants, they're dirty people. They bring disease. This border well, wall thing is about controlling the browning of America. Donald Trump is fixated on the southern border as he was the day that he announced this campaign. It is not about securing the borders. It is about uh, xenophobic, racist, bigoted beliefs. Well, so that couldn't be clear. Border walls are racist. We know that. Unlike border fences, border fences are not racist. They're much easier to climb over. And that's why Democrats have repeatedly voted to fund them. You could have lots of border fences and still wind up with 22 million illegal aliens living in your country. We have proved that conclusively over the years. Fences are the perfect solution if you're trying to pretend that you care about border security while simultaneously encouraging much of the third world to move here without permission. Fences are awesome for that. Yay, fences. But walls, well, as Nancy Pelosi has explained, walls are immoral. According to CNN, in fact, walls are nothing less than an attack on the human heart. Listen and learn. And a wall won't solve it. All that he's doing is putting up walls around people's hearts. And we are not a wall away from being better. Don't waste billions of dollars of taxpayer uh, money in order to build something that will not make our border more secure. Yeah, and that's the other point they keep making. Walls don't work. They're totally ineffective, except in prisons and the Vatican and outside Barack Obama's house here in Washington and in almost every upper income neighborhood in America where walls surround the front lawns of the homes where Hillary Clinton and Beto O'Rourke hold their fundraisers. But along international borders, walls are useless. A border wall would simply create a thriving new market in taller ladders. Jeb Bush used to say that all the time. Everyone in power agrees with him. They're nodding vigorously from their gated communities. The effect that the wall had on it. Well, we certainly do have that experience, Tucker. Between 2010 and 2012, there were 55,000 illegal immigrants into Israel. Now, you have to understand Israel is a tiny country, so 55,000 illegal immigrants in just a couple of years is a lot of illegal immigrants. Yeah. And uh, most of them settled in southern Tel Aviv, uh, which was already a, a working class or a little bit rundown area. The rapes and murders in southern Tel Aviv skyrocketed, skyrocketed in those few years. The Israeli government, under pressure, uh, from the grassroots mainly, grassroots protests from the, the residents of South Tel Aviv and other towns that were being overrun by these illegal immigrants, the Israeli government made a decision that they were going to build a wall, uh, a high-tech steel wall on the southern border, the border between Egypt and Israel. So it was built over the next few years. It was completed, almost completed, by 2015. In 2016, uh, the wall was up. 2016, there were 11 illegal immigrants who entered Israel. In, and, and then they raised the height of the wall an, an additional several feet. And in 2017, there was not one illegal immigrant that made it through the southern border into Israel. So that it's is a, a remarkable it, story. It works. So was well, there it's a, a story so, that's the, so I'm just wondering the political part of this. So the 55,000 illegal immigrants you're describing were from Africa, as I remember, Eritrea, Sudan, parts of Africa. Correct. Was there anybody in Israel who said you're racist for trying to keep them out? Mm -hmm. Well, there was some of that. Yes, uh, the, the so, some of the people on the left were were, you know, going crazy and having protests and. And they, they, they were complaining that it's a racist thing. But uh, look, illegal immigration is illegal immigration. 
And, and I, I don't know if you know this, Tucker. I was born and raised in the United States. I've been living in Israel for 27 years. But, but the Jewish immigrants who came to America, and I wrote about this extensively in my book, Trump and the Jews, they came to America as legal immigrants. They came only to work hard and only to be full Americans. That was their goal. And so, you know, I've heard people like Ocasio-Cortez from New York, the congresswoman, talking about how uh, the, the, the immigrants, the migrants are just like, just like the asylum seekers, uh, who, the Jewish immigrants who are seeking to escape uh, the, the Nazis in World War II. It's an obscene comparison, and I, I've, I've heard it too many times from the left. So, yes, there were some in the Israeli left who were complaining and who were even accusing uh, the Israeli government of racism. But the fact is that now nobody's complaining. Everyone is happy that we don't have illegal immigration to Israel.